Hi, everyone, and welcome to our next episode of our series of simple tips to improve your life. This is Summer Lovin, and we have our fabulous panel with Robin Thomas, Frida Lynn, Laura McLaughlin, and myself, Catherine Marie. And we're going to kick this party off right now, starting with Robin Thomas on beating the heat with 10 fun and easy summer drinks. Thank you so Robin. much. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen. While I'm sharing my screen, I'll tell you a tiny bit about me. I've spent 25 years in medical research. And then for the past 19 years, I have been in health and wellness um, with a company called USANA Health Sciences and also just helping people, helping help people with healthy habits. So today I'm going to be sharing some wonderful um, recipes. But first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about dehydration because um, these recipes all are going to be ones that help us stay hydrated throughout the day. Um, we can hydrate through just water, but we need more than that. And we just to have a general, straight, wonderful, hydrated body. Because dehydration really can sneak up on us. And before we know it, we feel some of the symptoms. We feel dizzy, lightheaded, get a little bit tired. Um, but so we want to know um, the symptoms and we want to know foods and things we can do to help us stay hydrated all day long. So first, we are usually familiar with and we're taught the symptoms of acute dehydration. And that's just if, say you're exercising out in this intense heat, um, really sweating a lot, or you have um, extra heat exposure, or maybe you're sick, maybe you have um, an illness. And that acute dehydration, um, you really, that's when you get the severe fatigue and lightheadedness and muscle cramps. And, and a dark colored urine that just shows you don't have enough water in your body. But what many of us don't realize is that dehydration can be a chronic issue. And actually, um, if we're not drinking enough, if we're not getting enough foods that have, have plenty of water in the foods, um, we start having more subtle, um, we it's more subtle symptoms. And these symptoms are like a chronic dry skin. If somebody's walking around saying their skin is always dry or your mouth is dry. And unfortunately that leads to bad breath. If people tell you you have bad breath, you may very well be dehydrated. Um, sugar cravings of all things, constipation and an intolerance to heat. Now, 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. That means that most of us are walking around in a state of dehydration, even when we're feeling like we're getting enough, plenty of fluids. Because one of the things we do is we tend to, or lots of us tend to reach for a soda or reach for sweet tea in the South or, or maybe a energy drink. And those have ingredients in them that are actually going to increase the dehydration and not really help you. So what you want to do is you don't want to reach for one of those drinks. You want to reach for um, something along the roads of what I'm going to be telling you. <laughs> but do you know that dehydration actually can increase sugar cravings? People don't think about that. But often, if you have a craving, sugar craving, and someone has told you, oh, go get a glass of water, and you find it actually eases that sugar craving, then you actually weren't really needing that sugar. You were needing some, you were needing to be hydrated. So the problem again with drinking a soda when you're thirsty, that's only going to add to the sugar. And even if it's a, um, a artificial sweetener, it tends to add to the sugar cravings. Now I already said that dehydration causes fatigue. Uh, we can, if in chronic dehydration dehydration, we can experience headaches. Um, it can be difficult to concentrate. We get that brain fog. And even if we haven't been exercising or sweating, it's a common sign of dehydration that people don't talk about. And it's said to be the number one cause of midday fatigue. Dehydration also causes 
foggy brain, foggy memory, irritability, and anxiety. Um, these problems occur because when you're dehydrated, that leads to an electrolyte imbalance. And if you stay active, or you're exercising at all, you need to pay an extra attention to not only just drinking water, but getting those electrolytes in. And USANA does have a wonderful little product, just a little quick stick pack. That's all the electrolytes you need. And it's not for every day, but it's for the active athlete who's working out in the heat, or if you're doing yard work or something in the heat, or if you have an illness that is causing a lot of dehydration, this is a wonderful little packet. Did you know that dehydration can slow your metabolism? They've actually done studies on this and they found that drinking a cold glass of water, at least eight ounces of water, boosts and speeds up your metabolism for about an hour, up to 30%. So it's a great idea if you're trying to lose weight to maybe half an hour before you eat or a little bit before you eat, drink a cold glass of water, boost that metabolism a little bit. Now, I talked about that water was really the best thing for, con you know, for, for we should be drinking water, but the problem is it's boring. <laughs> and, and an awful lot of people I talk to don't really like the taste of water. So you can choose to infuse water with any combination of fruits and herbs that pique your fancy. I mean, I have some favorite com um, combinations. I love a citrus mix, which has oranges and lemons and limes in it. Um, a cucumber, mint and lime is really, that's what you see at spas a lot. Um, pineapple and mint is another one and watermelon and rosemary or watermelon and mint is very good. And I'll have recipes for these in my Beat the Heat PDA. PDF, sorry. So if you want something a little more fun, maybe a little bit more party atmosphere, try one of these easy and refreshing mocktails. Now in these recipes, it doesn't have alcohol because alcohol is very dehydrating if that's all you're doing is drinking one alcoholic drink after another. So I would say at a party, if you wanna have a little alcohol, that's fine, but I would alternate. And you could alternate with plain water, but wouldn't it be fun to alternate with some of these? Um, watermelon is extremely hydrating um, and it also has vitamin C in it, which is lovely. Um, the pina colada is made with coconut milk and coconut milk actually is fabulous for replenishing your electrolytes. And if you, when you see the recipe, you might shape, switch it up and try coconut water. So that's also a very good one for helping your electrolytes. The mango pineapple banana smoothie. I just love those flavors together. <laughs> and I use, I use frozen, I just buy the bags of cubes of frozen mango and frozen pineapple. And then I take a banana and blend it all together with a little bit of ice. And it just gets a really frosty drink. Um, the Collins berry mash, um, that's a little bit like, um, it's, you know, it's in an old fashioned, and you're muddling it. You have ever heard of muddling cocktails? You're muddling the fruits and the berries. So these are berries, a handful of whatever berries you like, muddled and muddled with a little bit of mint, I believe. And the other thing that has it, usually these drinks, they put, uh, they muddle it with a sugar cube. But what my recipe has is this, instead of with a sugar cube, which add, would add a whole lot of sugar to your, to your drink. Um, this Booster C, which is a wonderful immune support, tastes good. It tastes like berries also. And it's, uh, but it also has a little bit of fructose in it and it works really well for muddling and also for rimming the glass. So it's just a lot of fun. And the last mocktail, and all these recipes are gonna be in my PDF. The Red Snapper is a little bit more like a Bloody Mary. You know, it, it's got the spicy, it's just a real, fun, spicy, Swedish um, drink to have. So a really punch of flavor. So um, all these drinks, but if you're at poolside, if you're at a party, it's always fun to have appetizers. So many appetizers are very unhealthy. 
um, and make you thirsty, and you know they're kind of dehydrating, these are both very good. Um, caprese skewers, they're always fun. They're pretty common. People, people at least around here love to make them. Um, this recipe has a lovely little balsamic um, marinade for it, you know, that is really wonderful to dribble on it. And the I love the Mediterranean pepper bites. I like different colors of peppers. The oranges and the yellows and the reds are actually have more vitamins than the green, and they're just a little sweeter taste. And these have chopped olives and tomatoes and cheese and a little bit of onion and cheese in it. And you just pop it in the oven. Or if you have one of those air fryers, these are really good in the air fryer. And then that doesn't heat up your kitchen. <laughs> so those are really nice. And they're just easy little pop in your mouth. Now, other foods that hydrate, I mean, who doesn't love a fruit salad? <laughs> I adore fruit salad. And again, this is your choice. I and mean, there's so many wonderful fruits in that one, but it's really your choice of what's in season. What do you like most? And then just besides just putting the fruit together, this recipe has a wonderful light dressing that has lemon and lime juice and grated ginger root and a, just a hint of maple syrup just to tie it all together. And it's just a very nice light dressing. Um, the one on the right, doo -doo -doo, the cucumber melon salad is a new one for me, but it is like a super hydrator. It contains melons, which are all, all the melons are very good for hydrating. I love melons in the summer. But it also has cucumbers, thinly sliced cucumbers, and those ribbons are ribbons of zucchini, which also are very well hydrated. And, and it really, the sauce is, the dressing is really what makes this salad. It's a vinaigrette that has fresh mint. Um, chopped out. You're gonna, you come a sort of pattern, you know that I'm gonna be sharing mint everywhere. <laughs> now the last recipe I have for you is the sesame edamame noodle bowl. And it again is a new one. Um, it is, it's the, probably the most complicated of all these recipes, but it really isn't that complicated. Most of the work is chopping the vegetables in those little sticks. Um, it is a cold or room temperature meal, and it has, you can choose the noodles you like in it, make the noodles, and then you chop up all kinds of vegetables. I also use edamame that's already ready to eat. You know, <laughs> Trader Joe's has it totally ready to eat. I don't have to cook it. Um, but the nice thing about this dish is it's jam packed with a wide variety of vegetables, which we wanna eat. And also it keeps. So you make it one day, you can be eating on it for two or three days after that. You know, you can have it as the main dish the first day and then you can have it as a side dish or have it as a light lunch. It's really nice. So those are all my recipes. And I just wanted to end with reminding you that there's so many healthy, and easy and delicious ways to stay hydrated during the summer. Um, you can infuse the water, you can make mocktails, and there's all kinds of different recipes, fruits and vegetables, um, so many possibilities. So um, I'm getting to that, Brian. Uh, Brian is wanting to know where to get the recipes. I have the recipes in a PDF, which you can download. There we go. And it's got all the recipes in here. So you get all the directions. And so my gift to you is this PDF. Um, I would love to give a free 30 minute wellness consultation. And that is at, you'll find me at meetrobin.me. And if, you know, if you want the PDF, just sign up for any short time and just say in the notes of my purpose, say you want the PDF. And then I want to give an additional $25 off plus free shipping of any USANA product order of at least $100. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy these recipes as much as I do. Looks like we may still have some technical uh, issues with Frida. Lauren, are you good to go next? <laughs> no, sure, definitely. I can I can go while we, let, yeah, let Frida, I know that she's you know been struggling with travel and getting connected with us, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and give you the spotlight. And go ahead. 
Absolutely. So, you know, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we are spreading our wellness tips and helping you, you know, get through the summer, feeling your best and eating your best. Robin, we are all just like our mouths are watering and I've been traveling and traveling. So I was just sharing, you know, with Robin and Catherine Marie that I just literally flew in <laughs> and delay after delay and I'm finally here so I feel like I'm just kind of like rolling off the runway up to the screen here but it rolls right into what we're talking about and that is how do you roll with the summer and how do you roll with it and and live in the heat and live in the the the, the fast pace but live well and it does start so much with your nutrition. So that was just perfect segue into what I want to share, Robin. So thank you. You did a lot of that. Because what I want to share is in the dehydration uh, department, because we are all experiencing what? Like this is the heat has been so extreme, beyond extreme globally. And I was just in visiting my mother in Arkansas where yesterday we were walking and it was my idea. So I, I'm going to tell you it's my, I was said, I want to go walk and do some cardio. Well, the heat index was 110 and about a mile and a half in, I was, whoa, my body almost like wanted to shut down. It wanted to shut down from the heat and feeling dehydrated. And the first thing that you want to usually do is grab that big bottle of water and guzzle it and guzzle a lot of it. So I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of Robin and talk about how we need to hydrate ourselves a little bit more from just water because too much water is not a really good thing. We don't want to just guzzle a gallon of water, even though we want to. But if we nourish ourselves by way of fruits and vegetables that Robin just shared, so get her PDF, that is going to naturally hydrate you so you don't feel this need to go get the gallon and just go, 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 go. <laughs> because really guzzling that much water at one time is not good for you. So you just want to be careful with how much water you take in at one time. You want to drink, you know, eight ounces, fine, but don't do the whole gallon. So... In regards to working out in the heat, it is fine to work out in the heat and movement is my specialty, but you have to know yourself. So my big word, you guys, is awareness. So we have to know ourselves. Like you have to be able to go, okay, like I did yesterday saying, oh, this isn't feeling quite nice. So like I'm feeling out in the sun on the black, you know, pavement that was very intense. I had to go set myself out under a tree. <laughs> so it's really being aware and listening to your body and your mind and how it is showing up in your body. Now that will come out in by way of perspiration. So yes, we sweat because that is your body's natural response to say, woo, we need to cool things down here. So the hypothalamus, I'm not going to go too much into the neuroscience aspect of it, but it's this little almond shape, little, little teeny tiny thing, <laughs> but it says alert, your body is really hot right now. And we want to protect all of the organs in the body so that you're performing well, and that will naturally produce sweat. So you start perspiring, but what most of us don't realize is that just sweating alone and the evaporation of sweat that's going to actually do the cooling down of your body is work. So your body is working extra, extra hard. So the more you sweat, the more your body is having to work and that is causing a lot of stress on your body and so many of us don't realize that we're just like just push it let's just go hard let's go hard and that is why i think many of us in the health space that are watching some of these athletes <laughs> And we see some unfortunate incidents that is they are so they're being pushed so hard in extreme circumstances, their body cannot catch up. 
So I know each and you know each case is unique. I mean, everybody has their own you know condition, but for the most part, as humans, we just have to watch how we are working out and producing that kind of energy because it can go into overload. So when we're out in that heat, it's okay, but just listen to your body, pull off to the shade. You can do some amazing breath work. You can do some amazing stretches. And that is a workout in my view. As everybody that knows me in my space, I'm the breath lady and the breath is a workout that literally can serve your body so well in terms of fitness and health. All right, so are we good with that? Is everybody good? <laughs> okay, so we did, we, we looked at hydration and we need it more from just water. We need to do, as Robin shared, we need it from our nutrients. So be sure you hydrate. Then as you are going out and choosing your workout, you may have to alter it. Maybe if you're a runner and you're saying, oh, I can't, you know, with uh, going and running at 110 degrees, that is just not doable. You may have to get up extra early. And if that's, that may be one option. You may say, well, I have kids and I have work. There's just no way I can alter my workout. It's looking at different options for you to move your body. I was just looking at an amazing video on Pilates is my background. So I was, but Pilates in the pool. So looking at different options so that you can cool your system down and you don't feel that you're having to be stuck in a routine of your typical workout. And that can definitely help you keep your movement going during the summer, keeping you healthy and keeping you active. Because back to the topic of feeling fatigue, fatigue is no doubt a symptom of just summer. We all are like, <laughs> we're hot and who wants to go work out in the heat? And it really does create that inner fog, that fatigue, your body just feels like run down and heavy. Heavy is a word that I hear a lot because I just feel heavy. I just don't feel like working out. I'm really tired is you know finding a different way to work out or move your body and it does not have to be excessive is a beautiful way to help you start to relieve that fatigue because that is a very common common i've experienced it i think we all have right i mean we've all experienced that summer fatigue we're probably eating a little bit more than we usually do you're feeling heavier you're celebrating a lot you're moving at a faster pace during the summer and I'm going to end it on that note is allow yourself the permission to say it's okay to not go do a hardcore workout, <laughs> but because a hardcore workout is not necessary in order to get a good workout. Breath work alone, as I said, is an amazing and amazing and it's free and it's there 24 seven for us to help us fuel our body and 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 oxygenate our body so we do not have to be pounding the pavement and pounding our heart because pounding your heart especially in the heat is not a good thing because you're producing way too much energy in in your your in cortisol <laughs> that is really not serving your body at all well so just be kind to yourself and say it's okay to go relax and chill out by the pool just make sure you're breathing by the pool you can do leg lifts at the pool then you can go jump into the pool you can do some leg lifts in the pool. You can do arm lifts in the pool. So do you see where I'm going with that, you guys? There are so many other options instead of just that routine of being on a treadmill because the heat can produce that treadmill burnout. So can winter. But we look for different options so that we can help our skin breathe. So I know we're going to segue into some skin because our skin actually needs to breathe. And breathing by sweating is a great thing, but just read your body, nourish your body, and enjoy your summer. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like she completely dropped off. Yeah, it does. Maybe having connection issues. Yes. So she is yeah. So she's presenting today 10 tips to care for your skin and particularly during the summertime. And, you know, we're all out and traveling and going on different adventures. And I think sometimes when we travel, 
we kind of forget about our skin and taking care of it. So it's a great reminder uh, for all of us during the summertime. One of the things that we want to protect from, of course, is the sun, all those UV rays and everything that does such damage to our skin, such as premature aging and skin care. And part of protecting it is wearing protective clothing. There is clothing that is uh, protects against SPF and also wearing sunscreen. And Frida is the expert on sunscreen. There's so many things to look for when it comes to sunscreen. Um, broad spectrum, F SPF 30. Ladies, do you have any other tips there? I know there's something else that uh, she said. That, I want to say it's zinc. Is that it? Or it's no zinc? zinc. Yeah, the, non, the non-chemical. She likes the non-chemical sunscreen. She likes the mineral sunscreens yeah. um, that are also safe, um, you know, for the waters too. You know, if you're if you're at the beach, it's safe for all the animals. Yeah, which is wonderful about her products because I've used them and the fact that it is, you know, it all helps the microbiome. And just as we were saying that our skin, well, we haven't said that yet, but our skin and maybe some of us know that and some of you know that is our largest organ. So using products like what Frida uses here is, is so beneficial, not just for, not even just for the skin, but for your whole system and for, as Robin was just sharing, the planet, because we need to take care of it. So many of our products have so many toxins that are so negative for our bodies and our minds, but also for our planet and what Frida shares, I mean, hers are I, I don't know how many you guys have tried, but boy, they are, they're really, really good. Yeah. And also we should have a regular regimen, a skincare routine. Mm -hmm. And in that routine, cleansing, of course, is important, important, but also moisturizing. And for a large majority of us, a toner uh, can be good as well. I know some people, either don't like the feel of toner or have some sort of reaction. So it's important to look for ingredients and that microbiome friendly within, within your products. And also thinking about travel sizes. So sometimes it's, it's difficult to lug our big containers of skincare and all our toiletries with us. So when you're traveling, remember three ounces or less in your carry-on and it's got to fit in a quart size baggie. So if you can get things in travel size, or even you can buy the containers, travel size containers, and just fill them with your full size products to have it ready on the go. And antioxidant protection for your skin. So protect your skin for, again, the UV radiation. Some important things that uh, Frida has mentioned to look for in your serum or your lotion is the vitamins, vitamin E, vitamin C, uh, resveratrol. <laughs> Maybe y'all know those names, I'm sorry. Uh, green tea, uh, vitamin B3, Q10, all of that. Anything to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I do. I think, you know, I don't know all of the lotions or I mean, excuse me, all of the ingredients that we really want to have, you know, our guard up against, you know, and I know Frida is so knowledgeable. And even if you share a product that you're currently using, she is very quick to help you read what's in your product so that you can, I know I, I'm with you, Catherine Marie, it's like, okay, all of these like long names, but she simplifies it, which is wonderful and helping to understand what's in our products that are potentially very harmful. And, you know, and there are many out there. So, yeah. I, I think all of these ingredients and then some, we need to uh, be sure that we're on the lookout for. Yeah, and these right, these list, this list here, these are all antioxidants. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what she's saying. Uh, you know, the better skincare has has these antioxidants in them. And Frida's great at answering questions too. So if you're out searching for the best uh, sunscreen or skincare product. 
she can answer why things are important to find in a product and why things might not be that great for you to so, so while she's having difficulty getting on right now due to travels, We'll make sure you get our contact information at the end so you can reach out to her with those questions. And I'm sure she's probably going to send you all out the PDF and some other information too. Uh, she, she's great at doing all that. <clears throat> she also recommends a facial mist, which we were talking, Robin was talking about hydration. And a facial mist can help to boost the hydration a little bit in, in your skin and Lots in your makeup and really is refreshing if you have sunburn. I, I've used hydration products after I've gotten sunburned and just sprayed it on my face. I like to use rose water. It's one of the things I use as a nice facial mint. Uh, really helps with that. Any additional on this one, guys? Yeah, no, I agree. We need to definitely, I think we've been all speaking of hydration, especially during this extreme heat, but that's year round, right? We need to always take care of our body and our skin year round. Um, but yeah, no, fully agree. Okay. And remember our eyes too. Our eyes definitely need protection. And there's amazing products. Uh, Frida has it under eye cream that I use. I get the dark circles under my eye and that product really, really comes in handy for that. And mm -hmm. also lip balm. Uh, being out in the sun, our lips get burnt, they get chafed, they get dry, and having a lip balm handy is, is key to keep those lips healthy and supple. That's especially good if you're swimming, if you're boating, if you're bicycling, if you're doing anything that and you're, you know, you're making your <laughs> make, making the wind go across your face, or you know, if you're at the beach and the wind is just blowing, um, you definitely need to take care of your lips. Yeah, and and that segues into Frida's uh, slide on skincare, especially at the swimming pool. Ooh, it looks like she might be popping on. Yes, I know. I made a huge amount. Well, I didn't even know I was bike riding on the beach several summers ago. My lips got so sunburned. It was almost like sun point. I've never had that, but it was because I didn't know. You know, I had sunscreen all over, but nothing on my lips. So guys, I'm not kidding. Now I am an advocate. You've got to put some sunscreen on those lips <laughs> if you're out in on the beach or in the pool because it really, really uh, can have an impact. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, yay, we can hear you. My my goodness, you guys doing such a great job. I, I probably don't need to be here. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. I'm so embarrassed. Um, so, but anyway, um, so let me just, uh, there's a couple of things to, to, uh, uh, add on, but oh my goodness. Um, that means that uh, you guys, uh, educate you well, right? Okay. Yeah. So the lip balm is because our lip does not have, it's not like the rest of the skin. It does not have hair, hair follicle, does not have sweat, does not have the oil gland. And so it's it's not like our other skin there. So it's so important to take care of the lips and nothing beats your personal experience sharing with the, the rest of us. The next one is caring for your skin for swimming in the pool because of chlorine. So of course you want to shower before and put the sunscreen, which protects you from the sun, but, but also kind of seal your skin so don't get too much chlorine into your skin but afterwards it's so important to shower uh, wash it off right away and put a moisturizer on your skin uh, then summertime yeah we all travel we also want to look good but we don't want to look too heavy so are you in a slide of the no makeup look yep uh, move there so so that that's really in you have this no makeup look but you still put in makeup Okay, do a CC cream or do a lotion with a foundation that would just act like a CC cream over your face. Um, and like um, bronzer, okay, there's a lot of bronzer, but my company also has bronzer I just absolutely love because you can use the bronzer so many ways. You can use that as your blush. You can use that to, um, as a contour. You can use the highlight. 
Because normal way, a lot of people use primer, foundation, powder, blush, eyeshadow, um, contour. It's just way too much. Just do very light makeup. You still can look really good. Have that show off that beautiful radiant skin. Okay. The next one is don't forget your body. Um, you know, our body also a lot of area can be dry. And when you're under the sun, when you're uh, play on the beach in the pool, make sure you also uh, wash, shower, and um, yeah, put a lotion on. And you'll know um, what what other um, ingredient you want to avoid, right? Avoid some of the ingredients that really can be harsh on your body. And the other trick is we we are going to bare our skin in the summer. Um, and you can use the bronzer to kind of fake that um, the tan will look really nice. And yeah, you don't have to worry about the sun um, damage there. Um, so that's just one of the tricks there. Uh, the last one is hydration. And I think um, Robin already talked so much about that. And I think you'll talk a little bit. Now, the other thing I just want to talk about the toner. Some people don't use the toner. Usually that that probably is fine, but um, but the toner is to neutralize the skin. Okay, our skin like to be acidic. And when you are traveled, your body takes so much uh, abuse there. A lot of times the pH of your skin can be shipped to be alkaline and that really affects the skin barrier. Your skin will become dehydrated and not healthy and inflammation would occur. So that's why if you, um, sometimes a toner will have that added benefit there. And it's easy to carry a toner. Just use um, cotton pad and spritz toner on that and put it in the um, Ziploc, then you have it. Um, and let's see what else I wanted to uh, add to it. Um, oh, one thing I did not know and when I was preparing for this, there are the P, the pilot and the cabin crew has twice amount of chance to develop melanoma than the general public because they are travel in a high attitude. So it's so important to wear sunscreen even you are traveling, especially in the airplane. So um, I think the time is up. So um, I truly apologize, but I think you did such a good job. I will send out. Uh, the PDF, maybe with a recording or whatever. So uh, thank you so much. And um, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm signing off. And Catherine, Frida, looking forward to hear yours. <laughs> and Frida's information is on the screen right now. You can take a screenshot on your phone or computer if you like, so you have that information handy. And thank you so much for Frida for getting on in the midst of all your travels and everything that you got going on. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Catherine Marie, Catherine Fulton Kirby. I am a licensed massage therapist and I'm also a certified meditation instructor and I teach online courses in mindfulness and meditation. So I want to start by asking you guys, when you woke up this morning, did you take a shower? Did you brush your teeth? Did you have a cup of coffee? What did you eat for breakfast? Do you remember? Did you have breakfast? Or lunch? Do you remember that? Do you remember driving your car to the office or wherever it is that you work? Do you remember how many stoplights you hit? Do you remember how many times you changed lanes? Or the time that it took you to get from point A to point B? If you're like most people, you likely don't remember, or at least don't remember everything that was happening in that time frame because you were running on your autopilot. That sounds pretty cool, right? We have this autopilot. Yeah, it, it takes care of everything for us and we can just zone out and the autopilot's got it. Maybe not so much. When we're on autopilot, we're missing 
so many things that are going on. Our brains are really amazing system is one of the most amazing computer systems. It, it really works to help us out. And there's times where being an autopilot could be a good thing. Some of the tasks that we do, our brain's autopilot is working subconsciously to take care of that where we're not fully aware. However, it's a double-edged sword because we're missing out on so many different things. And when we're running on autopilot, it means that we're in the back seat of the car of our life. I don't know about you, but I would much rather be in the driver's seat where I can steer the car whatever direction I want it to go in, in life for me. So there's some signs that could lead you to realize that you're in autopilot or operating on your automatic. And one of those is predictability. So if you have a routine, a predictable routine, such as in the morning when you get up and shower and brush your teeth and you pour that cup of coffee, Robin talked about drinking sodas and, and coffee is the same way as well because if we're dehydrated, coffee is gonna make us even more dehydrated. And are you actually reaching for that coffee because you want it, you're, you're thirsty for it, there's some benefit to why you're drinking it, or are you pouring that cup of coffee, your automatic is doing it because every morning, that's the thing you do in the morning is you pour your cup of coffee and that's how you start your day. Not ever asking yourself, hmm, why am I pouring this cup of coffee? Do I even want coffee? Do I even like coffee? Our automatic is taking over and making that decision for us. And then you may feel like something's missing. It's a great idea to ask yourself what's missing, but you might just get this overwhelming feeling that you're walking through life and yeah, you're, you're here, but are you really living your life? It's just like there's, you know inside there's something missing and you can't figure out what it is. That might be your automatic. And as I just said with the coffee, asking yourself, why, why am I having this cup of coffee? Ask yourself why you do the things you do. If you're not asking yourself questions and you're just letting life happen to you, you are likely operating on autopilot or automatic. Do you ever get through a whole day and end of the day, you're like, I don't know what I accomplished today. I, I feel like I didn't accomplish anything. I don't know what I accomplished. Even though you were doing and busy and going and all this stuff all day long, but at the end of the day, you, you can't even remember what you accomplished, even though there were likely things you accomplished, starting with getting out of bed in the morning and fixing yourself breakfast or taking your shower or doing all this stuff. So you accomplish a lot of things, yet you forget what you accomplish because you're running on autopilot. Are you a dreamer? Can you imagine yourself five years, 10 years, 15 years into the future? Where are you going to be at five years from now? I remember when that question would come up like on interviews or in different things. And I used to be like, where am I going to be in five years? I don't even know where I'm going to be tomorrow. I get it. But it's because we don't allow ourselves to dream. We can't, we can't get out of our box, our day-to-day -day box to allow ourselves to dream. And if that's where you're at, you're likely stuck in autopilot. 
So what's the good news is there's something that's going to get us off the autopilot and get us back in the steering wheel. And that is dun, da, 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 awareness. Yay, let's hear it for awareness. Woo, 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 woo. Awareness is what gets us off of autopilot. And there's many ways to become aware and to interrupt our autopilot. We talked about questions already, but asking yourself powerful question, questions, asking others powerful questions. Why, what, who, how? I think as at a young age, we were taught not to ask questions, not to question authority. It is what it is. This is the way it is. But asking questions and being curious is actually the antidote for our autopilot. It's the antidote for those voices in our head that I lovingly call the itty bitty shitty committee. Those voices that want to tell us we can't do, we can't do what we want to do. Living outside your comfort zone, that box or the bubble wrap that you wrap yourself in every day, that safety zone, oh, I can't stray from this box because I might fall, I might get hurt, somebody's going to hurt my feelings, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. That's the comfort zone that we rest in. Get Getting out of that comfort zone, taking risks and doing something new every day. If we're present and in the moment, fully present and in the moment now, that means new experiences are coming our way. And new experiences don't happen on autopilot. New experiences don't happen when we're stuck regretting the past or worrying about the future. New experiences happen when we're here in the present moment. Setting your intention for the day. That matters. And that will start your day with an attention statement of whatever it is for you, who you're going to be that day, what you're going to accomplish, all of the amazing intentions, if you set them forth, that starts to get you one step forward in that right direction. And when you're doing that, you are squashing the autopilot and you are putting yourself in the driver's seat, fully aware of what you're going to be accomplishing that day. Using all of our senses is another way to become aware and to squash our autopilot. Do you know what that coffee tasted like in the morning? Do you know what it smelled like? Do you know when you took a shower? Did you just go through the motions and five minutes in and out, you just know, okay, I took my shower, I can check that off the list? Or did you experience your shower? Did you live your shower? That is being aware when we can use all our senses in everything that we do. This lovely picture right here is actually my shower. So you could say that I am in my shower right at this moment. And I was really immersed and enjoying my shower in this picture. When you look at it, did you know it was a shower? Probably shouldn't have told you because of course you knew it was a shower. I told you it was. But what do you see when you look at the picture? Do you see something that maybe you didn't think you would see in a shower? Look at the patterns of the water, the coloring, the shadows, the shapes. When you're in the shower, there's so much more than just getting yourself clean. Shower is an amazing way to start your day, to start your awareness for that day. It starts in the shower. Smell your shampoo. Smell your soap. Feel the water hitting your head and your back in a new way, as if you've never 
felt it before. Like, what is this? I, I've never experienced it before. When you can live and you can breathe and take in that experience as if it's the first time you've ever showered before in your life, using all of your senses, you're going to step out of that shower being fully aware and fully present. What a great way to start your day, experiencing everything as new. Now, I would like to invite you all in this moment to take a moment and close your eyes. And just become aware of your breath. And I want you to bring to mind the room or the place that you are in right now, watching this webinar. With your eyes closed and only with your mind's eye, I want you to picture the things that are around you right now. Bringing to light in your mind's eye the colors of the objects, the shapes, the shadows. Noticing the smells. Noticing this all as if you've never experienced it before. Notice the sound you hear. You don't have to try to identify the sound. Just become aware of it. And notice. Gently rub your hands together or rub them across your legs or whatever you're sitting in. Notice how that feels. Feeling it as if you've never felt that before. I want you to take one last deep breath in. And when you open your eyes, look around the space that you're in right now. How well did that match what showed up in your mind's eye? Were there things that you missed? Things you didn't know that were sitting right in front of you? When we are allow ourselves to pause, breathe, and experience all of our senses, and everything is new, it creates new possibilities and new experiences. And that's what we just did right now. Now, I did say we were gonna get steamy, not just in the shower, but in the bedroom. So this might be a little above PG-13 or maybe PG-13, but we're going to go there. Yes, we are. You're in the bedroom or whatever that room is for you. And the love making machine is a happening. And the average person has the experience of making love for about three, I think it's 3.4 minutes or something along those lines. Don't quote me on it. Do you remember those experiences? Do you remember your partner in those experiences? Today, I'm going to invite you 
to take a new look at how you experience the experience of summer loving in your life. Whatever that is for you, it may be completely non-sexual. It may be. But can you step into that environment as if it's completely new? As if it's, as if it's the first time for you as if it's the first time for your partner. Can you experience it with all of your senses? Noticing the sensations, noticing in a different way, the touch of a feather, The chill of an ice cream. How your hand melts into your partner's hand. The taste of maybe one of those fruity, non-alcoholic beverages that Robin has amazing recipes for. The taste of your partner's lips. As if you've never kissed that person before. Have you explored with just your eyes? Focusing on that one sense, the eyes. Noticing every curve, every freckle, every mole, birthmarks, every beautiful, perfect, and perfectly imperfect inch. Have you ever blocked out a sense? It's said that when we block out one sense, our other sense, senses heighten. Maybe that's putting on an eye mask or a blindfold. Maybe that's wearing a set of headphones and focusing on one sense at a time and experiencing each one. What would, the, what would that experience be like for you, for your partner? How would that change your life? How would that change your life outside of the bedroom if you experience every moment that fully and is as if it was the first time you experienced it before? I invite you to take these tools and use them however they best fit you in your life. And I just want to remind you all that we're going to interrupt our automatic. We're going to take back the control of our wheel, of our, uh, our car of life. And we're going to do this by asking powerful questions of ourselves and of others. We're going to do this by using those senses, and we're going to do this by experiencing everything as new. And with that, my special bonus for you guys is I do have a meditation offering for you all. I will create a personal meditation for each one of you. You just have to get on my calendar at katherinemarie.me and we will have a session and I will create a meditation for you. And also I will send out a PDF with all these amazing tips to help you get steamy this summer.